Let's review the modified internal rate of return, or sometimes simply referred to as the MIRR. The modified internal rate of return in corporate America is used in lieu of the internal rate of return. And the reason for that is that in under the internal rate of return, an implicit assumption uh, is made that the cash flows generated from the project will be able to be reinvested at the internal rate of return. Now keep in mind from our previous chapter on the weighted average cost of capital that our stockholders and bondholders when they invest money with us are really placing us in a specific risk category. And if they and if the weighted average cost of capital is 10%, think of it from the standpoint that they have placed us in a 10% risk category. And of course we should know by now that there is, if you expect a higher rate of return, you're going to have to assume more risk and vice versa. So therefore, what happens is that if we utilize the internal rate of return, our stockholders and bondholders might not be too happy with us. So therefore, we incorporate the modified internal rate of return whereby we will utilize the firm's weighted average cost of capital, uh, that return that is placed upon us by our stockholders and bondholders in this so-called risk category, and that is the rate that we will use uh, to determine this modified rate of return. And this is the example that I quickly want to go through. Uh, I'm assuming here that uh, this particular company uh, has a project under review that's going to cost $50,000. Uh, it's going to generate $15,000 per year over the next four years. The firm has a weighted average cost of capital 12%. We're in a 12% risk category. And you can see the way that we're going to set this up. Uh, the first step that we will do is that we have to calculate the future value of an annuity stream. And according to the table, uh, this is how we would uh, set it up, just like we did under Chapter 9. Uh, $15,000 each year for the next four years. And, of course, that's an annuity amount, so we're going to enter that as payment. Four years. Um, and we're going to be able to get 12%. And the reason why I'm using 12% is what? That is the weighted average cost of capital. And the Future value of that sum is $71,689.92. Excuse me, and 92 cents. What we want to do next is that I want to be able to determine, okay, what is my rate of return? I, I know that it's going to cost me $50,000 uh, if I purchase this asset, and I know the benefits derived from purchasing this asset is $71,689. So I simply want to calculate that rate of return if I invest $50,000. I know in four years I have determined it's going to be worth $71,689. What is the rate of return? So it's a very simple process once again. Um, my future value is at $71,689. I know I'm going to have to pay for it, $50,000. That becomes my present value. Four years. And the modified internal rate of return is 9.43%. Now, something very, very interesting here is that the 9.43%, as you can see, is less than my weighted average cost of capital. So from this illustration, from the computation, I would not make the investment because my modified internal rate of return is less than my weighted average cost of capital. So there you have uh, a quick uh, overview on how to compute a modified internal rate of return.